absolute value equations. So in this video lecture, our objective is to solve absolute value equations both algebraically and graphically. All right, let's remind ourselves what we come in already knowing. Okay, we already know what absolute value is. Absolute value is the distance a number or an expression, the distance something, is from zero. How far is this from zero? That's absolute value. Two points to make. As there's no such thing as a negative distance, absolute value is always positive. Okay, and the second point, with the exception of zero, there are always two numbers or two expressions that are the same distance from zero. Okay, so for example, the absolute value of positive six is equal to six. In other words, six is six away from zero. Likewise, the absolute value of negative six is equal to six because negative six is also six away from zero. All right, in general, here's what we're looking at. The absolute value of something let's call it u, is equal to a, is the same thing as saying that u is equal to positive or negative a. Okay, For, so here's, here's u. If u is, u can be positive or negative 6, but it equals the same thing. In this case, a is 6 in both cases. Let's take a look at an example. The absolute value of x plus 2 is equal to 5. Okay, well this is our u and this is our a. Okay, so this is the same as okay, that x plus 2 equals positive or negative 5. Okay, so the absolute value of of something equaling something, something else, is the same as saying that the something equals positive or negative something else. So the absolute value of x plus 2 equals 5 is the same thing as saying that the x plus 2 is equal to positive or negative 5. This results in two equations. Okay, results in two equations. Equation one, x plus two is equal to positive five. And equation two, x plus two is equal to negative five. x plus two equals positive or negative five. So x plus two equals positive five or x plus two equals negative five. These are two linear equations. We can solve them for x. In both cases, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides. In the first case, we have x is equal to 3. And in the second case, we have x is equal to negative 7. If you were to check this, 3 plus 2 is 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5. Negative 7 plus 2 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is also 5. Okay, let's do one example. Let's talk about the steps of doing it first, excuse me, and let's do an example. So how do we solve an how do we solve absolute value equations algebraically? Well, first thing we do, we want to isolate the absolute value. Okay, once we've done that, we now know that we can rewrite our absolute value equations equation as two equations without absolute value, and then we're good. We're gonna simplify, separate, solve, and check each equation, those steps, of course, as necessary. All right, let's take a look at one. Solve the absolute value of 2x minus three plus two equals to seven. 
Okay, so first thing, let's isolate the absolute value. So I need to subtract two from both sides so that I isolate the absolute value. So I have the absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to, in this case, 5. Okay, so we know from before this is equivalent to, I'll use this as kind of equivalent to, The absolute value of 2x minus 3 is equal to 5 is the same thing as saying that 2x minus 3 is going to equal positive or negative 5. Okay, so we're here. Step 2, let's rewrite this as two equations. Okay, equation 1, 2x minus 3 is equal to positive 5. From here, 2x minus 3 is equal to positive 5. Equation 2, 2x minus 3 is equal to negative 5. Now we're good. We got it. We just we do our simplify, separate, solve, check. Well, they're already simplified. We can separate. I'll add 3 in each case. I'll add 3 to both sides. And I have on this case, I have 2x is equal to 8. In this case, I have 2x is equal to negative 2. And now I can solve. Divide by 2 uh, on both sides of each equation. On the left side, I have x is equal to positive 4. And on the right side, I have x is equal to negative 1. Okay, so that's done it. Now, of course, I want to check my solutions. I think I have two answers, 4 and negative 1. I go back to the original equation. Always I check with the original. And I first I'm going to check x equals 4. Okay, here's the original, right here. So, x equals 4 tells me I want to know, does the absolute value of 2 times 4 minus 3 plus 2, does that, question mark, does that equal 7? Again, I substituted 4 into this original equation to see if it, hold, if it makes it true. Well, this is 2 times 4 is 8. 8 minus 3, this is the absolute value of 5 plus 2 does that equal 7? Well, the absolute value of 5 is 5. Does 5 plus 2 equal 7? And the answer is yes. So I feel pretty good about, I feel pretty good about 4 uh, being a solution to this equation. Let us check our second uh, answer we got, which is x equal to negative 1. So let's go down to here. Let's check x equals negative 1. Okay, so they have the, again, using the original, right up here. The absolute value of 2 times negative 1 uh, minus 3. Okay, add 2 to that. Does that equal 7? Um, I'll be a little quicker here. Well, I won't be quicker. I'll just do it. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Okay, so the absolute value of negative 2 minus 3 plus 2. Does that equal 7? Well, the absolute value, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5. So I have 5 plus 2. Does that equal 7? I'm right back where I was up here, as you can tell. And indeed, that one checked out as well. Okay, let's solve it graphically. Okay, we've been doing a lot of that. Here's my equation. I have something on both sides, so I'm going to use a y1 for the left side and a y2 for the right side. And the question is, where do they intersect? I got two answers, so I'm hoping they intersect in two places. One place where x equals 4 and the other place where x equals negative 1. So I'm going to come down here and solve this graphically at the bottom of my paper. Okay, my y1 is going to equal the absolute value of 2x minus 3 plus 2. My y2 is going to equal to 7. And I'm going to do a calc intersect to see what we come up with. And we should come up again. We want to come up with positive 4 and negative 1 if this, if this works out correctly. And I'll bet it does. Slide that up for you so we can see it. So here's our calculator. Okay, go to my y equals. Okay, y1, absolute value, that's a math function, that's a math number function. There's absolute value. 
Inside the absolute value symbols, we'll have 2x minus 3. Outside, I'm going to add 2. I'm going to graph that. We know that absolute value graphs as a V, and you'll see the V, I hope. There's the V right there. Absolute value graphs as a V. I'm going to go ahead and zoom to my standard window, and you can see the V is right there. Okay, let's go back to Y equals, and let's put equation number 2, Y2 is equal to 7. And that, of course, is a horizontal line crossing the Y axis at 7. When I press graph, here comes my horizontal line. Well, sure enough, I can see that my, my, two, my two graphs intersect in two places. One of them is in quadrant 1, one of them is in quadrant 2. Let's go first with quadrant two, the one on the left here. So second calc intersect. Move my cursor closer to that side. Enter, enter, enter. And there you have it. X is equal to negative one right here, which was a solution I got. So I know that one works. Okay, you can, um, yes, we had X equals negative one was one of our two solutions. Let's check this one. Second calc intersect. And let's move my cursor closer to that side so I can, it'll, it'll, so my calculator will focus on that intersection. Enter, 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 and there's my four. X equals four is where it intersects there on that side. And as you'll recall, those are the two answers I got here. There's my four, and I got negative one here when I solved this algebraically. Okay, so there you have it. The key to solving absolute value equations is you need to isolate the absolute value first and then rewrite as two equations. And more often than not, you're going to wind up with two answers, hence the need to solve two equations.